ในช่วงต่อไปนะคะเราจะพูดกันในเรื่องของอีเทอรียมนะคะอีเทอรียมเนี่ยจริงๆหลายคนทราบอยู่แล้วแหละว,ว่าเป็นหนึ่งในบล็อกเชนที่มีผู้ใช้งานเนี่ยค่อนข้างมากที่สุดนะคะแล้วก็มี Product d a p ต่ตางๆที่ Build อยู่บนอีเทอรียมไม่ว่าจะเป็น d e f i เป็น NFT เป็นเกมไฟรวมถึง Metaverse นะคะแต่ว่าอีเทอรียมเนี่ยก็ไม่สามารถเกิด Mass Adoption ได้ถ้าเกิดว่ายังรองรับธุรกรรมได้เพียง15ธุรกรรมต่อวินาทีจึงเกิดเป็นบล็อกเชนเลเยอร์สที่บิวต์ขึ้นมาบนเลเยอร์หนึ่งนะคะเพื่อแก้ปัญหาในส่วนนี้เราจะมาพูดคุยกันในเบื้องลึกว่าเลเยอร์สอันนี้คืออะไรมีความสำคัญอย่างไรต่อผู้ใช้งานอีเทอรียมนะคะแล้วก็ถ้าหากท่านไหนต้องการหูฟังในการแปลภาษานะคะสามารถรับได้ที่บริเวณทางเข้าของฮอของเราเลยนะคะก็วางบัตรประชาชนหรือว่าพาสปอร์ตไว้ได้นะคะ If anyone need the translation um, headset you can get it at the entrance of the hall All right so let's get to the next session why layer 2 scaling solutions are important layer 2มาตัวสำคัญที่ Ethereum ขาดไม่ได้นะคะ So everyone please join me in welcoming คุณ Ivan Ferrari Head of Business Development Uh, Mr. Apit Sharma, Vice President, Polygon Technology. Mr. Vince Yang, Co-Founder, ZK Link. Mr. Sanjay Mittal, Lead Engineer of Connect. So everyone, please give them a big round of applause. Thank you. So please, if you want to say a few words, few words means um, five or six about each of you. Yeah, you want to start? Hello. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Sanche. And um, in 2020, I came across the next. And uh, I shared the vision of the interoperable future. So I have been with them for the last two years. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Vince. I'm from ZK Link. And very glad to be here. Hi, everyone. Excited to be here. Thank you. So uh, let's start. Well, we assume that uh, everybody knows uh, everything about L2s. Uh, um, but anyway, we're going to explore the topic uh, a little bit more in depth now. Um, some funny questions just to set the tone and warm up a bit. So what do you think? Answers, uh, very quick answers. Uh, what do you think about uh, uh, the future of, uh, of the space in terms of uh, do you believe in uh, multi-chain or cross-chain? Cross-chain. Mother chain. Yeah, it will be a multi chain. Multi chain. Good. Do you believe in uh, decentralization or centralization? Decentralization. Hmm. Decentralization. Absolutely decentralization. <laughs> okay, that's too easy. Um, so, in the typical trilemma, crypto trilemma, which one of the three you think it's uh, the priority right now? Security, decentralization, <clears throat> or scalability? Uh, it kind of depends, but I would go with huh? security. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, if we're talking about uh, the blockchain trilemma, I think there are two factors that I can choose out of the three, right? So okay. for me, I would choose security and decentralization. That's, I think, where we are today. And among the two, which one you think is more important anyway? As a user, I think security is more important. Security. So I think this is not a either or question. So it's a it's a design consideration that you have. For example, we, uh, you know, as Polygon, we are strongly committed to decentralization. Uh, as you know, it, ethos of Ethereum goes right. Uh, over over and above that, all the applications like these are design considerations for a game. Maybe uh, their 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 uh, you know uh, this thing is security, right? Uh, while uh, for a finance application, maybe it's it's again security is uh, a primary factor that they okay. need to take into security. Yeah. Okay, no, good. so I would say uh, as a protocol, yeah, we are very yep. uh, like we are focused on decentralization. But other than that, these are design considerations which depends on the use case. Okay, so let's dive in into L2s. Um, uh, we know that the origin uh, comes from the fact uh, basically that um, Ethereum uh, was becoming uh, particularly expensive because of the number of users, and um, alternative uh, L1s uh, then were launched and created, uh, but then. There was a problem of uh, bridging the, uh, the different tokens uh, among the different chains, uh, and that created a uh, humongous opportunity for hackers uh, that stole a lot of money. So this year is, um, I think, more or less $3 billion, uh, a bit more than that, 
that has been stolen already. So um, L2s might be one possible solution. So if you you polygon, so <laughs> you're uh, definitely one of the most important uh, L2s out there. So if you want to give us, uh, first, first of all, uh, the definition of L2s, two, if you believe that uh, uh, Polygon is actually an L2, and uh, what do you think about uh, this as a, a sustainable solution? So, uh, so first of all, and you know, I'll ask a clarificatory question there. So L2 is basically uh, any protocol which is building on a layer one, improving it. For example, uh, Polygon scales Ethereum. So we are built on top of Polygon. You create your transactions on uh, uh, Polygon and then we secure it on Ethereum. So essentially it scales the Ethereum. So yeah, in that sense, we are definitely an L2. Uh, we started with the POS, proof of stakes chain, uh, which is still one of the most adopted chains. Like they have seen a huge uh, number of applications. So today, uh, 53,000 dApps. Uh, they uh, they kind of integrate with Polygon. So we have applications from almost every every uh, use case. So we have a lot of games. We have a lot of DeFi applications. But is this a solution? I mean, why solution would to I... what? So that's the question that solution to what? Solution to the uh, hacking problem, solution to uh, the trilemma. I mean, why would somebody use Polygon instead of using, I don't know, Arbitrum or Cosmos or whatever you want to... Yeah, so... Uh, so I think uh, if I understand the question correctly, right? So, so basically, Polygon is a scaling solution, right? So, uh, it number one. Secondly, it has a great developer experience. It is totally EVM compatible, and uh, we have a strong team working on a lot of zk solutions. So, if you if you have a very long term perspective, then definitely you would want to go with Polygon. Now, coming to these problems like hacking, right? So, hacking is not a protocol problem. It's a it's a problem of your smart contracts being unaudited. Uh, it's a problem of not understanding, uh, you know, few of the security nuances that you. Uh, need to follow, right? So hacking, I would say, is not particularly a protocol problem because if you look at it, most of the hacking stuff has happened with the bridges, right? So where funds are moving from one, assets are moving from one chain to other chain, right? So that's the most vulnerable piece that we have seen. And in a lot of cases, the contracts were unaudited, right? So I would say it's more a process problem and not tip, not typically a protocol problem. That's I would say. That's what I would I, say. I, I totally agree. So the fact that L2 is built on L1 um, well, L1 Ethereum, in your case, at least, uh, solves uh, at least partially the problem of uh, uh, bridges. So then going to um, you two guys, uh, uh, you have, uh, you, you will define exactly what uh, you're working on, but you have sort of bridging solutions. Uh, please, uh, please define them. And so how do you tackle this problem? How do you uh, uh, try to solve uh, the potential hacking that is still uh, uh, de definitely a risk for users. Um, I will start with like the. It's no surprise, as you said, that it has. Um, we had a brutal year uh, of three billion hack, and uh, uh, it was basically because of these stupid mistake created by the minimized stress minimization, and having this shortcuts to overcome the 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 latency time or uh, what I would say is the, the greedness to actually not focusing on the security itself, but um, getting the uh, getting these uh, tokens or whatever the piece of information which is being relayed from one side to another, um, being uh, like having a scalability on it. So uh, without focusing on the trust minimize, minimization by using like valid data set, like additional valid data set, or multi-six, which uh, these are the issues which actually cause these three billion or additionally to the contract bugs. Yes, and uh, when, when I'm talking about Connects, uh, we pride ourselves to the most minimized, uh, most trust minimized solution, and uh, that we do by using a modular stack. And if we see the intraplimal trilemma, it's uh, we, we solve it by e addressing each and every problem and being on the addressing uh, being on the side and being on the way on the trust minimization by using the underlying AMBs which are provided to each and every L2s and L1s. Okay, if I don't know a lot about this space, yeah. maybe I don't understand what you're talking about. So, right. what is actually that you're doing to solve this problem? How does it work? Why should I trust your solution? versus uh, using a bridge? Uh, one of those. So we are a cross-chain bridge. And uh, what we do is that instead of creating our new trust, minima uh, trust assumptions, we focus on actually creating an interface 
which is uh, which is common to e every chain where you can use L1, L2, or, or on any other protocol. And using the AMBs underlying, so if I say about Polygon itself, Polygon has POS Bridge, which is the most secure for its technology. Even if I use a additional optimized technology to create a bridge in between, it wouldn't be the most secure one. And same goes for the Arbitrum, where the rollup would be the securest. And for the Cosmos ecosystem, it would be IBC. So having a common interface in between these creates extensibility. And uh, for the general, uh, generalizability, I can provide, send any message from one chain to another. So the future is basically user comes in and actually interacts on any of the chain and can send the piece of information to any of them by using a same interface across all the chains. Okay, I hope it's clear. Um, Vince, please. Okay, uh, so uh, our solution or our perspective is a little bit different. First of all, ZK-Link is not a cross-chain bridge, but we can provide the cross-chain functions similar to a cross-chain bridge, which means that we can help users to move funds from blockchain A to blockchain B or blockchain C. Uh, but we're not eventually building ZK-Link for this purpose. Just as Binance is not built for cross-chain to move your funds from Ethereum to BNB chain, but you can use Binance for that purpose. As a matter of fact, I believe that most users today are using these centralized platforms as the most, their most trusted or reliable, most convenient cross-chain solutions. As we all know that the cross-chain bridge hacks are terrible, has been terrible, and will continue the trend, I think, for a while. But I do believe there is the future for crossing bridge is bright. Uh, the, 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 the need, the, the, this is a primitive that is needed. And uh, what, what I'm personally, we are, and the, as a team, we believe in the future of multi-chain, right? So there will be a million different blockchains uh, to fulfill different kinds of purpose and, and, and needs. And, and I believe that the, the needs of, needs of crossing liquidity transfer will evolve quickly with the technology, with the applications in the future on different levels. And the ZK-Link is uh, specialized in building a platform that are connected with a lot of different blockchains, layer ones, layer twos, even layer threes, whatever, uh, as long as they can support their zero knowledge verification uh, of zk snarks the, the proof system that we are currently using. And which means that we are aggregator of assets, liquidities. The users can enter the Zeklink platform, can deposit their assets from different blockchains, and they can withdraw from Zeklink back to uh, night, uh, I, uh, all of them, right? So uh, no matter which one you want to go, which one, no matter which one you come in, and no matter which, which one you want to go, this is basically a platform that, that are interconnected with all blockchains. Which means that it comes with a very big benefit. It means that they can manage their assets with one wallet. So basically, this is a big usability problem of today's DeFi. Because there are too many blockchains, too many wallets. It's difficult to manage, difficult to use. And the liquidity transfer is very painful and dangerous. Yeah. So uh, ZK Link is a layer two. To uh, some point, yes. We and are using similar technology, so you can think of us a layer two. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, and it's a sort of the top of the pyramid, so connecting different chains, and people can transfer. I don't know, using, for instance, uh, Avalanche or using uh, BNB, they can transfer from these chains uh, their to tokens uh, to zk Link, which sits, let's say, figuratively at the top, and then once it's there, then they can trade and then they can withdraw back to their chains if they want to use DeFi, for instance, tools. Yes, this is exactly the same process for all of the rollups. We are a ZK rollup. We're not only layer two, we can be layer three, layer four, right? Uh, so we are ZK rollup. Uh, for for any rollups, there are two, three, uh, there are three steps. First step is deposit. So use your decentral wallet to deposit. Whichever your assets, are sitting on Ethereum, Polygon. For example, the first step is to deposit. Second step is to utilize the assets on the rollup platform, whatever use cases there are. And then after that, the third step, I think for some users, 
when they want to withdraw, they can withdraw. But for me, I think uh, ultimately, I think the assets will a, a large part of the assets will stay on the platform, so they don't have to go back because there will be enough applications use cases there. So just like when, when you deposit your funds to Binance. You don't necessarily want to withdraw immediately after you trade. You just stay there. But actually, it's not safe because it's centralized. Yeah, agreed. So I, at the very beginning, I asked a quick question about uh, uh, security, privacy. You've seen that uh, you've read, I'm, I'm pretty sure about it, you've read about uh, the recent um, scandal in a way uh, related to Ben Tamask, uh, um, or consensus actually tracking what you do on chain. So what would you recommend for a normal regular user to do? Anything, nothing, change wallet, uh, stay put, what, what do you think about it? So I think people should uh, do their own research on this and uh, f you know, at finally what I feel is that if you control your keys, you control your content. That's the, that's the fundamental problem, uh, that's the fundamental principle that I follow. Uh, like everybody, like today we are okay with all like all our data being with Google, all our data being with Facebook, right? So it's a personal choice that everybody has to make. Yeah. I think we all need to be very careful with these data that we gave away to these centralized platforms. Yeah. And there, are, I hope there will be uh, other alternatives that we can use. I, I believe there are probably some are, but um, which I'm not aware of. But yeah, I think eventually we all need better decentralized solution? Um, it kind of depends on use case itself. Uh, if I see MetaMask, MetaMask has 80% of market throughput. So you cannot escape that, right? So it depends on what use case you have or if you want your IP address not to be shared, you can actually have that. Uh, you can use the personal RPCs, you can use, there are multiple solutions for it. So it depends if you, uh, if you strive to have the fully private uh, where you don't even want to share the IP address or the information which are being relayed right now and which are the topic of discussion. Um, it, uh, uh, you have solutions, so whichever you strive to use, uh, those are available. Yep. Thank you. So going back to uh, L2s, uh, do you think it's uh, a sustainable solution uh, going forward? Uh, can you compare L2s uh, with uh, alternative solutions, so, so with a uh, uh, alternative L2s in other ecosystems. What do you think? Uh, so alternative L1s, you mean? Yeah, yeah. like so, Cosmos or yeah, yeah. Well, also Polygon, for instance. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think L2s definitely are sustainable. And going forward, what is so the if if I paint the bigger picture, right? So Ethereum becomes the settlement layer of whatever is happening. Uh, then there will be multiple transaction layers. Uh, these transaction layers can be general transaction layers, for example, something like Polygon POS today, or these can be app-specific transaction layers. For example, some uh, some of the banks, they may want to have their own sovereign chains, and then they may want to just bridge assets between one chain and the other chain, right? So that can, that can also be a, a scenario, right? So uh, I think, yeah, definitely they're sustainable, and I think they are the way forward, because you will need that, not only that scaling, uh, scaling effect of L2s, but there are nuances to it. For example, uh, some manufacturing companies uh, who want to make a consortium and they want to create a supply chain orchestration platform. For them, privacy becomes important because they do not want to expose their business uh, business uh, data to other parties, right? So then privacy becomes a nuance, right? So Nightfall, for example, something like Polygon Nightfall comes into play. So I think, yes, L2s are the way forward. Uh, with rollups coming up, scaling will be uh, will be much better than, and then data availability layers like Polygon Avail coming up, which will uh, have your data availability on a separate layer. So I think uh, that will further reduce the cost by 99%, right? Of of, uh, because majority of the cost is of uh, on-chain data storage. So yeah, so L2s are the future. Uh, they will evolve into much more nuanced, uh, uh, you know, chains. Uh, there can be a lot of application-specific chains. So that's how that's how I see. And now, as comparing just very very quickly to alternate L1s, I think it's a it's a very it's this is a question which has probably nothing to do with blockchains at all. It's a from a tech point of view, I see these L1s and L2s. They are simple technology networks. Nothing more, nothing less, right? So it's just like creating a social network. And for any network business, the biggest hurdle is, or the biggest entry barrier is, what is the strength of the ecosystem that you have? So today, uh, why is Ethereum, uh, you know, decidedly, uh, you know, ahead in terms of 
uh, in terms of applications that are being built because it has the biggest ecosystem and that entry barrier you have to you know work with that you cannot ride against that so i think uh, that's why i think ethereum is going to be uh, the most prominent chain at the settlement layer for sure what about um, there's a lot of talking about cosmos even if the latest proposal has been rejected but let's say cosmos or uh, what's going to happen to avalanche solana you know they will exist so it's not i'm not saying that you know only ethereum will exist but what i'm saying is given the ecosystem strength or given the number of projects that are already there the developers that are there with ethereum it is going to be a prominent uh, prominent layer one so of course these multi multiple chains will exist they they will have relevance in uh, some way or the other for sure it's not uh, not not denying that but i think uh, in terms of scale ethereum is going to surpass probably any any other layer one and that's 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 going to be the uh, you know thing that that i believe yep. thank you vince uh, yeah i do think i do believe that the uh, layer 2 solution is sustainable and in the long term it will be winning solution uh, it's a very interesting question because we now see a lot of uh, we heard a lot of debates on the long term outlook of cosmos ecosystem versus layer 2 solutions but uh, from my perspective, the true potential or the benefits of the scalability of layer twos has not yet been seen, has not yet been unlocked. But we are very bullish on that. I think all the builders in this space are long term believers in this. And we have seen that when, when we were working on this. And I think in the next few quarters, we will see a lot of amazing use cases being built on layer twos. Um, and personally, uh, believing that the layer twos will be somehow dominant uh, in mid midterm, like in the next few years. Yeah. So one or two examples that come to mind that you think is particularly emblematic of what L twos can deliver in the future, near future. Um, there are generic layer twos, like uh, optimistic, optimistic roll up and zk roll up. Of the two, of course, I choose zk roll up. And then uh, on, on the, uh, among the different teams that are building ZK rollups, the, generic, the general purpose of ZK rollups, there are a few very uh, like, uh, pioneering ones, including the Polygon layer two teams. And uh, ZK Sync, StackNet, uh, Squirrel Finance, all these teams, they, have, they are doing amazing jobs. And we've seen very positive signals to, for them to deliver. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting them to, some of them to be extremely successful. And there are some like application specific layer two ZK rollups like us. We are providing very specific approaches to dedicated use cases. In certain vertical use cases, we hope to be more powerful, higher performance at the lower cost, more user friendly, more dev friendly. So we want to be most, we want to be particularly uh, beneficial in some use cases, then if we successful succeed in that, then we will become successful as well. Um, my take is that if if we see layer one, layer one is the is a layer, it's a base layer where you, you can do the transaction settlement, and it provides the validity layer to you, uh, and it's heavily inclined towards the decentralization and security part of it. To solve the scalability problem, that's why the layer two arised. And layer two are heavily focused on using, utilizing the layer one security and uh, providing you the best possible scalable and uh, scalable and decentralized solution. L, uh, these supernets itself is a use case dependent uh, chains, which uh, if they strive to stay on that, uh, they will be providing the best throughput and best use case for those uh, for each of these individual cases which are being developed. Uh, similarly goes for the JKNets itself. It's a, it's a supernet which is built upon these rollups, uh, which is a spatial, uh, which is being used for a spatial use case. And uh, that's what I personally think that there is harmony and uh, there, is a, there is a dependent use case of each of these, uh, each of these layers, each of these supernet. And if being used if not being greedy, considering all the trust minimization solution, security, we can have the best ecosystem being developed throughout and have these, uh, have these bridges communicate in between the, uh, the, 
the information which will be transferred from one side to another. Yep. Thank you. So if this all is true, why, for instance, uh, dy dx has moved from your family to uh, Cosmos? Sorry, can you repeat that question? Sorry? Uh, you, you know, um, dy dx, they moved from uh, L2, uh, L2 to Cosmos. Uh, so if everything that uh, you actually talked about uh, uh, almost a fairy tale is true, then why did they move as one of the examples? <laughs> I am not at all aware of the facts here on dy dx moving from this to that, so can't say anything on okay, that. Okay, yeah. fine. Um, so we only have four minutes left. Uh, open question to why are you in this space? Because I mean, this conversation L2 is, is quite dry in a way, right? So it's a, it's a bit technical, even if we didn't really dive into the, the coding, but it's a bit dry. So why, why are you in this space? Why did you fly all over from Mexico and you're still jet lagged to be here on stage and talk about these things? First of all, for the wonderful audience we have right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, so me, uh, I have been in this space for the last five years and uh, I started during my college itself. I had experience to work with Aave and these wonderful um, Polygon. I worked for them for a year. And uh, whenever I was, when I, when I started and whenever I have been into this space, the thing which actually uh, motivates, motivates me is that this is the future which we have been looking towards, which provides us the decentralization or which provides us the, uh, the freedom to actually uh, not being restricted to each of these authorities which are being constructed at each and every level. And that's what my personal feeling towards is that why I moved to this space. Yep, thank you. Uh, I am still very excited and still amazed by the fantastic properties and the potentials of zero knowledge proof and of what this technology can bring to the industry, to this whole world. Uh, our teams studied the practice in zero knowledge proofs and researched some experimental small things uh, in 2019. Uh, one guy from our team developed the first ZKP toolkit uh, in the, for the Polkadot ecosystem, for the Polkadot not ecosystem community. The, and another guy from our team that developed a decentralized voting small tool uh, based on ZKP. This is more interesting things. And ever since then, we've been big believer in uh, ZKP Maxi. I think I will remain a ZKP Maxi for the rest of my life. That's, that's a bold statement, uh, especially in crypto. Uh, so, uh, okay, so I think I started in, in Web3 or blockchain or crypto in 2018 when I was still with Ernst & Young. So uh, I got connected with Sandeep somehow and I started uh, doing that. So at that time, for me, it was a new technology because I was a tech consultant. So I was just approaching that as that. But eventually when I started realizing uh, the potential that it has, I realized that we are at a point where, you know, internet of the future is being built. It's like being born in 90s and being able to influence how internet will look like today. So I think that that is really, really exciting for me. Right. That's one. And secondly, uh, I feel that while we have, like, we have been so much cultured by, uh, like, institutions that, you know, this is the way of life. You have banks, you have this and that. So that's the way of life that you have been totally cultured to believe in, right? But when you realize, when you enter DeFi, when you uh, enter crypto, you do some transactions there, you become part of NFT communities, then you realize that this is a totally different uh, way of looking at life. So that that really excites me. So so I'm, I'm here for the culture, I'm here for the tech, and I'm here for the amazing people who are building a lot of stuff against a lot of naysayers, against a lot of hurdles that we are facing. Yeah, thank you. I mean, Polygon is building half of it, basically. We have to stop you somehow. Otherwise, nobody else can, can participate in the system. But anyway, uh, Polygon is, uh, is, is great and is in board, onboarding, by the way, a lot of Web2 legacy players. So how do you see this, actually? Oh, we have 45 seconds. But anyway, so do you think Web2 is finally going to hiddenly, so taking over the, the, the space or...? No, uh, I would say that Web2 will definitely join this Web3 movement and they have already started doing it. So I, I have seen like in 2018, I was trying to sell these solutions to enterprise clients. Nobody would even listen to me. Now people are, uh, you know, calling and asking that what we can do. We launched a metaverse for an airport, right? So now a moment, the moment has started, enterprises, they have realized that 
uh, things are not going to be the same and they they just want to now make uh, you know best use of it try to create value for the business so i think they are very positively looking at it yeah thank you we derailed a little bit from l2s but uh, yeah zero good thank you very much and thank you pleasure thank you so thank much thank you so much guys thank you very much Thank you so much to all of our speakers. Um, I'd like to invite the host representative to give all the souvenirs to the speakers. Um, please go to your left-hand side. Thank you so much. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much.